Hello Steelers Nation, it's Draft Eve. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Steelers Syndicate, we're glad to have you here. As you saw in my episode yesterday, I do believe that the best way for the Steelers to win the Super Bowl through the draft is by trading up to get Christian Gonzalez. You can break down all the reasons why there. I do want to hit on a comment that I got from there from one of our regulars who makes a lot of sense. And the bottom line is, is that I bring up trading Deontay Johnson a lot. I do. But that's because I believe that it's going to help us get a Christian Gonzalez. And if it's what it takes to get there without giving away assets from the first or second round next year, it's how I believe the best route for this team to be built, both in the short run and in the long run. I also am realistic and honest enough to know that there's a strong possibility that Deontay doesn't get traded. His contract is not the easiest thing to move around. And there's a propensity of teams that do not want to pick up a receiver who had a quarterback average when the ball was thrown a ball to him under 70, which is really, really bad. So I get that he's probably a stealer next year. But I'm saying that in an ideal bubble, the best way to upgrade this team is Christian Gonzalez. What I want to address today was the final mock draft from Peter King. The big hotshot Peter King was supposed to be connected with the entire NFL. Not only has he gotten his draft wrong with the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's a common tread that is going around in mocks for all over the place that the Steelers are taking a wide receiver in the first round. That would be the worst thing the Pittsburgh Steelers could do. Because I just told you that I don't believe they're trading Deontay. And I think that there's... Lots of arguments you can make for not trading Deontay. You have a second-year quarterback, so therefore giving him a consistent set of weapons from year one to year two, there's an argument to make there. The guy sits in holes. He doesn't do anything once he gets the ball, but he sits in holes and catches the ball while at the lower end of the league range, does catch the ball in the league average perspective, just not after we factor in the difficulty of route. So there's an argument to make saying that I believe he's worth a third-round pick. The rest of the NFL might not. And I also don't believe giving him away for less than the equivalent value of a third-round pick is worth it. So therefore, there's a strong possibility Deontay is on this team. Deontay Johnson is slated as one of your starting three receivers. And George Pickens is obviously one of the other ones. Putting a first-round pick as the third wide receiver on this team and realistically, the fifth option on any given play is a complete and utter waste of a first-round draft pick. And there is no other way around that. The only, only way it makes sense, even if we're talking about the one from Ohio State to draft a wide receiver in the first round, the only, only way it makes sense is if you have traded Deontay. And I'm not even sure it makes sense if you do trade Deontay. And my reasoning for this is straightforward and simple. We won the lottery last year getting George Pickens. We only got him because he was injured. And had he not had the ACL injury his senior year, he would have been a top 10 in the NFL draft. You do not try to take his snaps away from him and his volume away from him with another first-round pick. All you're going to do is hurt both Pickens and whoever the first-round pick would be, and as a result, neither one of them will get the ball enough. Neither one of them will grow the way they should. It's like trying to grow a plant without giving it enough water. You'd only be able to water it half as much as you should. Therefore, it will not be able to be successful. This team has figured out very obviously it's not going to outscore the conference. We cannot outscore Kansas City. It cannot happen. And going and getting another wide receiver when it's under the tutelage of Mr. Matthew Canada, who has never developed a prime asset in his career, does not make any sense. George Pickens fell to you. He should have been a top 10 pick. You couldn't pass him up. Understandable. Adding another one to a man who is not capable of developing talent will hurt this team. 
the number one thing that this Steelers organization has built right now can do to improve the 2023 likelihood of winning the Super Bowl and beyond is to get the elite corner. And I'm not talking about what Lolly is trying to push with a slot corner guy. Quite frankly, they're a dime a dozen. You can get them in the third round and beyond. They're almost as easy to get as running backs because slot corners at the end of the day are the easier position to create in college. Little more people can do it, and as long as they're shifty, they can play it. There's more of them on the planet doing the body type theory. Elite outside corners do not come around very often. And when the Steelers are in a correct mindset, they don't have the ability to trade up to be able to get one of them. We are fortunate with the circumstances of this 2023 draft right now. First, tons of teams need quarterbacks and they are willing to trade up immensely for them. Second, of those teams that need corners, most of them need a quarterback more and are going to go in that direction, meaning that the top-end talent at cornerback will come to us. Perhaps the biggest one, and this is admittedly looking into the rumors and the reports, is that Witherspoon is being rated higher than Gonzalez. All said and done, Witherspoon career will be much, much worse than Christian Gonzalez's. Chris Gonzalez is the best corner in this draft. But for some reason, they keep reporting that he's going at seven. Okay, give me Atlanta, give me Gonzalez, let's make something happen at eight. I am all for that. Now, at the end of the day, is there other talented players that can help this team get to the next level? In the long run, yeah. In terms of difference maker on the field 2023, starting week one, not really. I mean, we can get Byron Jones from Ohio State. Great left tackle. Phenomenal player. I don't believe he's a net tangible increase over what we would get out of Daniel Moore this season. Long run's a different story, but in terms of this season, rookie Jones, third year Dan Moore, I believe Dan Moore is at least comparable, if not an improvement. So we have a chance of getting a corner who can be a staple forever. I mean, this can be hot rod, guys. A trading up for it is the asset. Even if we would get the Ohio State wide receiver in Braxton Smith, there is no way we will give him the ball enough to make it worth it. We already don't do it with a receiver who is more talented than him and had a better draft profile than him. Say that again. George Pickens was healthy entering into this draft. He would be the first receiver off the board. There is no doubt about that. So why on earth is people pushing to take away his volume? George Pickens is the answer. He is the best player on the Steelers offensively in the receiving options. There is no doubt about that. Yes, it's like the rest of the offense. It's all based upon potential. I understand that. But the ceiling for George Pickens is through the roof. And remember, he was still coming off an injury last year. You get you add in the second lap around the circuit, as Tomlin likes to say, and being healthy? I mean, the sky's the limit for this kid in a way that we haven't had on offense since possibly... Well, since Antonio, but he wasn't thought that way when he was entering it. But in terms of a high pedigree draft pick, since Plex. I mean, that's where George Pickens is at. He, he has the probability of going through the roof and making things amazing. Drafting a wide receiver, even if it is the best at his position, the first receiver off the board, and all of those other fun cliches, it does not make sense for the Steelers at all. Peter King and the rest of the national media pushing for the Steelers to continually get a wide receiver in the first round, completely, completely missing the mark of what is best for this team. 
And while there is criticism that we've gotten out there about Tomlin, and I will be addressing that in tomorrow's episode, Tomlin does not do things that are not in the best interest of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Roonies don't do that either. This is not a team that will tank for Tua. That's not how this works. They are going to make the selection of who they think is the best player for them. I am firmly cemented that that is Christian Gonzalez. 100% sell the farm to get it as long as it's only this year's assets. You completely destroyed Chicago in getting number 32 overall. And if it takes 1-32 to get Gonzalez, do it. I'm so excited for the possibilities of this because Gonzalez, game changer. Now, we're going to see what they do. Obviously, between now and Thursday, a lot of things can happen. I do not expect them to do any trading up until the pick is on the clock. There's no doubt in my mind about that because it makes no sense to trade up now. What makes sense is we're sitting here, Gonzalez is still on the board, it, it, it's a totally possibility. Because before the eighth pick, four quarterbacks are probably going, at least three for sure. Jalen Carter's going. Then you only got three other picks. And if you're one of those top teams, you can go, well, yes, Jackson or Jack Smith is an amazing talented wide receiver. Maybe we should go up and get him. For some reason, there's talk about a running back going in the top ten. Should not happen. But if it does, even more value for Gonzalez to slip. Because each spot that he comes down, the cheaper it is to get him and the more likely it becomes. And on the, the Jones front, for people who are saying, get Jones, get Jones, get Jones, that's the only part of the Aaron Rodgers trade that truly impacts the Steelers. With the Jets being now at 13, I believe that's where Jones is going. So whether you're trading up to 12 for Houston's uh, second first round pick, 10 for Philly, or 8 for Atlanta, the overall cost between that is now back-end insignificant tangibilities. We're talking about extra fifth rounders, next year's fifth. Like, basically people that you don't count on changing the direction of your program. So when I look at this, we're going to have to trade up for either of the two studs that Steelers Nation wants. Gonzalez or Jones, either way, we're trading up for them. My answer, get the one that will change this team forever. You will have a 10-year positivity with either of them. But when you add Gonzalez, how hard it is to get a number one elite corner and going for it is worth it. Not to mention the fact that Peterson, while a great signing, is not a long-term solution. You put Gonzalez there, if Peterson flames out earlier than expected, you still have an elite number one corner. If Peterson stays strong, as I believe he will, with Gonzalez, your team can shut down edges so people can't do short routes, and you can sack the quarterback all day. So we really enjoy talking about the draft guys here. It's two days away. So excited for that, that tomorrow night the draft starts. So fantastic. Programming note for the Steelers Syndicate on that notion. Since the draft is, is obviously going to be a primetime event, the video for both Thursday and Friday is going to come out at 2 p.m. So we might not be in your recent feed at 7 where you're normally looking for us. Just make sure you click subscribe and notification and we'll still be there for you. Steelers Nation, we're glad to be a part of this. Obviously, I'm all on the Christian Gonzalez bandwagon. And I hope the Steelers sign up to do it. And Khan just has been pulling my hope and my heartstrings for the last three months. Hope Khan does it. I hope Steelers Nation gets a great one here. And like I said, as long as it doesn't cost next year's drafts assets of the first or second round, I'm not going to complain. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go.